Going to the data, uh, uh, Silvio, you, you mentioned the E57 file. So Matterport provides the option of both a Matterport Matter Pack and a Matterport E57 file. Uh, can you talk perhaps about those two deliverables plus versus using a uh, RTC or higher end scanner to generate a E57 file? Is, is that enough? Sure. Um, I can definitely uh, provide you know, insight when it comes to the Pro 3. Maybe uh, you know, Richard can talk about the uh, Pro 2 to see you know, how the E57 compares to the matter pack uh, deliverable. Um, but in terms of the E57, uh, the E57 is a um, uh, non-proprietary file format. And within that file format, uh, you have uh, different layers of information. You have the uh, LiDAR information that the Matterport 3 captures, right? So those are uh, points in space with X, Y, and Z values, uh, as well as you have information about the um, polarization, the uh, red, green, and blue uh, values of each point within a point cloud, right? So the, uh, the Matterport 3 scans and takes photos at the same time. The scanner superimposes the col uh, colors of the images on top of the point cloud that it captures. So within that E57, you get XYZ values of each point within each station, as well as you get uh, color colorization information for those points. And you also get a um, the uh, the 360 image that comes from from the um, from the scan from the Matterport three. So let me ask my question slightly different. So a Matterport service provider has no idea other mm -hmm. than uh, in Matterport workshop uh, order E57 file. Yeah. So help us understand when uh, when either of you have probably taking a Matterport E57 file and scan the identical space with a high-end laser scanner. Mm -hmm. uh, please compare that is it is it is is it slightly off? Is it off by a big amount? Is uh what's what gives you all this angst when you compare the E57 file from Matterport to a higher end LIDAR scanner? Well, Dan, when you refer to being off, are you referring to geometrical accuracy? Uh, I don't know. Tell, help, you know, if we're, yeah. help me understand yeah. what 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 matters. What what are what's the right way to understand the, the data? So it depends. If you know, if you just want to get the uh, 360 imagery, right? And I think uh, you know, Richard can uh, go into detail how he's using it um, using a third party uh, platform. Uh, then yeah, you you get actually better uh, visuals within that E E fifty seven than what you get from the RTC three sixty camera or something like a ZNF uh, imager, which are the some of the best scanners for uh, for uh, colorized scans on the market. But uh, but in terms of uh, geometry, right? The uh, X Y Z values for those points. Yeah, you cannot even, I mean, you can't, they're not playing, I mean, they're not in the, I mean, the, the price difference between those is like, you know, the RTC is like 15 times more expensive. Okay, awesome. So, so. I, I, I I hear your, I hear everybody's angst about the data. You would never use yeah. a Matterport Pro 3 camera on anything that that mattered and, and the difference in quoting the project between using what you might say is the right tool versus a Matterport Pro 3 is the difference between night and day. That said, <clears throat> I, I, uh, Silvio, I'm hearing you that the point cloud looks pretty that's generated by the, uh, that, that's viewable in the Matterport E57 file. Is there any reason that, that you would use the Matterport E57 color point cloud uh, to do something from a um, architect's perspective, an engineer's perspective, a construction professional's perspective, somebody that's drawing a BIM model. Is, is the E57 from a Matterport helpful at all? Or, nah, it's just... I mean, it is. The word is it is. Um, but so if somebody, let's say I didn't have the option to use any other tool and somebody gave me a, uh, a point cloud generate, generated <laughs> with a Matterport uh, 3, first thing, me as a or us as a company providing as-built, I would just check to make sure that if we have any misalignments between stations, 
if that's the case, then you know we would have to uh, have a discussion with the clients showing those instances. Station have, means station means like the position of where you know where you place the uh, the camera, right? And you move it around. That's a station. Okay. Um, and uh, but if everything looks okay, even though the data is noisy, somebody that knows how to interpret a point cloud, somebody that understands how buildings go together and assemble a model or draw a uh, drawing, they can put something together that is, again, John you know, has mentioned this, is within a certain level of accuracy and that needs to be stipulated with, you know, on the drawings so the clients understand the limitations. Well, what, one of the products Matterport offers is a BIM file that is created from a Matterport Pro 3 camera, for that matter, a Pro 2, a Pro 2 Lite, a Pro yes. 1. Uh, this, uh, maybe, I mean, uh, I, I would question that, that product. I would, I would definitely, yes, I would definitely question that product. It's I think that confusing. goes back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. I think that goes back to my statement about John's stuff earlier. Um, a model, nobody knows what the background information is when they're delivered a model. Um, people create LOD 300 models from hand measures and distos. It doesn't even need to be scanned or photographed. Uh, John, you, about three months ago, you rehashed an old BOMA lease area plan your firm had done with the old technology of hand measurements and distos. And you guys went back and laser scanned it with the RTC. Yep. And the difference is, and we're talking using distos and architect's knowledge to the laser scan was astronomical. It was, yeah. The, the building was, uh, it wasn't this, it had a lot of weird angles to it. So it, uh, it was not an easy measure by hand, um, even using best practices. Um, you know, we ended up with a CAD file as built that looked really good. Um, you know, we, we uh, published that to our client and that's what uh, was used for many years. Um, it wasn't until quite a few years later, uh, we went back, they had us rescan the space to do some updates. And, uh, and this time we were like, oh, yeah, let's overlay our scan data with the, uh, the CAD file that we had done many years ago by hand. And we were kind of curious, but also a little nervous to see what it would show. And uh, yeah, sure enough, it was, it was off. Uh, you know, quite a bit. Um, was that with the Pro 3 or that was with a, a high-end? This was with uh, a, an actual, I think we used a, a Faro laser scanner. 